This is Casey Corbin. I'm doing a short video. This is an approach that I'm going to try to use using a swipe technique that I'm going to call borrowed trouble because I'm going to attempt to put the, the swipe color like usually the white on this piece that is kind of a failed project uh, and instead of putting it on the canvas that I want it to end up on I'm going to put it over here so it pulls it that way and I don't have this band of white and this band of black. In this case, I'm going to attempt another experiment which is using two other colors completely. Some um, people have commented on the past about the uh, containers um, that I use that I find um, real helpful. It kind of makes them at the ready. I used to just use the disposable cups, um, you know, the, these kind. and. Uh, you know, they're great, reasonably straight edged, a little bit of a ridge here, but are, um, you know, it gets a little expensive after a while and there's no good way to seal it. And so then I went to um, using uh, mason jars and the mason jars, you know, are great because you can seal them up. I've had it in here for a long time. They got the rubber band in there. They're not really losing very much moisture at all. Stir it and it's ready to go. But the biggest problem is, of course, I got a mess on here and then the unless you do a really great job of wiping off the paint from around the edge uh, every time you open it you get little bits of pieces of dried stuff in there that show up on your your artwork so that's not really great um, and then uh, someone on the site recommended uh, these the um, uh, they're 20 for about three dollars so run the math on that what's that about I don't know 13 14 cents a piece no no it'd be yeah, somewhere around there, 15 cents a piece, I think, um, which are great because they have um, lids and you can, you can uh, without any of those, you know, straw slots in there, and you, you can even shake if you wanted to on here and get the color. Um, however, you also have kind of a similar problem in that it gets into the ridges. You pull it off and sometimes little flakes of dried paint gets in there, which shows up, you know, in uh, places on your art. Um, but I still use them because you can have multiple custom colors going and you know specific things that you may not use all the time so I use these for for really my um, secondary colors maybe and then um, for 99 cents you can get these clear containers at Walmart which are the condiment containers I always get the clear ones I even indicate on here how much water I put in, how much of the paint that I use, how much of the pouring medium, and what type of additive the D is for the dimethicone in this one. I'm using, in this one you can of course, you know, you don't need very many of these because you can get your primaries. Um, if you have a, like a gold and, and silver additives that you use a lot, or excuse me, um, those colors, then you know, I've got those for that. And then of course your primaries, black and white, but I use so much of the white that I just use the bottle it gets down low enough and I've even indicated on here how much of the paint, how much of the water, how much of the pouring medium I add and um, that I have not put any dimethicone or any additive in here is my my code for that. So you just write on that with a sharpie and it seems to work pretty well. And by the way, the cheapest paint that I've found is I found it on Michaels for $7.79 online and it comes with a pump and it's 64 ounces and so these are uh, great I have had no problem with the paint at all it seems to be working really well I squirt it right into the container and then do my additives and then I give it a shake um, pretty thorough shake whenever I am making it initially when I'm going to use them I just kind of give them some gentle tilts like this mostly to incorporate the dimethicone which seems to float to the top the dimethicone that I'm using is the popular uh, L'Oreal Extraordinary Oil. Um, I've used it a lot and there's barely any missing in there. So usually one of these gets one or two squirts and that's it. And so this will probably last me the lifetime. Uh, there's a lot of other additives, of course, that you can use and you can read about that on the page. Um, another little tip that I want to point out to you is, um, and I of course got this from Anne Marie, is to have some cheap printer paper nearby so you can grab it and really do uh, just kind of put a sample of all the paints that you're considering. And at that point, you can take a look at it and say, oh, I don't really like these colors together, um, or you know, or do I like the colors together? I had ran this color 
and it's way too thin and so I started off with a house paint and it's very very liquidy so I added some um, ironically some gray latex paint that I had stored in this water bottle a long time ago and it's really thick and so it seemed to even it out to the consistency that I wanted I still wasn't sure about the color of it and it ended up being in uh, put in this cheap foam cup because I don't expect to use this one again I was really just I was ready to throw the whole thing away to be honest with you but and even in here I didn't know if I liked it or not and lo and behold I put it on the paper particularly next to the gray and some of the other colors and I like it a lot so um, it also gives me a, a kind of a look through um, I, I really like the gold with this brown here that's a neat color combination to me and I like these two right here I think that there's a chance that these three are too bright for me so I may go through at this point and maybe put a drop of black in there to dull it down and maybe get to something a little bit more of like a um, even with the yellow and get something closer to this uh, more of a chrome yellow here and so this this defining your palette is helpful to uh, say okay this yellow goes better than that bright yellow um, so I might end up using that color instead and with this experiment I'm trying to use up all the stuff that I have in my mason jars anyway and I uh, want to get those cleaned and, and, and out the door and then I'll purchase more uh, this is this has been a real great uh, thing for me because I can have just a few minutes before I need to go to bed at night, get the kids in bed, <laughs> uh, watch a little TV with the wife, and then I have a little bit of me time. And so instead of standing here mixing for a lot of time, uh, these are just ready to go. And so I can read about something that all that you did, you guys did on the page, and go, oh man, I want to try that. And then I can just grab up these bottles and grab a canvas or, or grab some... Uh, um, uh, Yupo paper or uh, oh and one other thing that I found that I like a lot Having some success with too is that instead of Yupo paper um, Photo paper has really come out of vogue um, You know, we, I think most of us have found that it's very expensive to print real photos on your It was, was kind of all the rage to be able to print at home. That was pretty exciting years ago and I think people are like it's way too expensive to do that now and it's really cheap when I just zip it over to one of those photo places and they print it pretty cheap so I actually able to pick these up I didn't even pay that I, I think I paid probably 10% of that uh, maybe at a yard sale maybe just on sale and instead of the Yupo paper the, the, the shine that is on this if you work with it kind of quickly because it does get kind of gummy after a little bit on the photo paper works pretty well and I've been playing with it with some pores this was one that my uh, 10 year old daughter did and um, uh, just kind of see how it would dry and how it would frame what it would look like so um, and it's especially good for experimenting before I waste a, a canvas on an idea that may or may not work so just Some additional hints. Someone had recommended to me that with the large pores, I was using some, some playing cards, which I'll probably use today for doing the swiping. That was a good, good for me because I do have a heavy hand and I don't seem to get the swipes correct. And so, um, if it has some flexibility, it seems to work a lot better for me. These, someone recommended to me, I'm sorry, I can't remember, I'm terrible at names, um, to, uh, to use some cheap cutting boards uh, for swiping, and for that purpose I, I did. And this is um, uh, a larger thing that I did yesterday. One of the uh, advantages is, is that collecting the skins is a whole lot easier on this because it's kind of made to be able to be used to pull away. So getting my skins is now a whole lot easier on this material than it was um, on what I was using previously, which was, um, I still line my table with it, which is just this uh, freezer paper, because it's got a plastic coat on one side and paper on the other, and of course it's very disposable. You just throw it away. Um, the uh, dump here in, in our location 
will not accept paint in liquid form. It has to be dried out. And so they, rec they tell you to open up cans of, you know, your house paint and it has to dry out before it can go into the dump. So, of course, they'll accept this where they would not accept liquid paint. But I don't like to throw them away anyway. So I'm going to tint um, my colors and, and adjust those. And then I'm going to do a time lapse of me pulling using this technique again that I'm calling <laughs> borrow trouble. So then I'm going to borrow the paint from over here and swipe over. And then I'm going to switch it around and then do my secondary color on this side and swipe that way and see if I get more of a, uh, a pure look on this canvas. So you can hopefully uh, catch that video next. These were just some of the things that I found very helpful to me and some things that I see a lot of people ask questions about. Enjoy.